All right, starting with the doors. Uh, first things first, obviously we're gonna need to get the door panel off, but from there we're gonna be starting with the outer door skin. Uh, the process for the outer door skin is gonna be really straightforward. We're gonna do as much coverage as possible with Resinix CLD squares. Uh, the Resinix CLD squares are a constrained layer damper. This is going to reduce structure-borne resonance on the outer skin. Uh, resonance meaning you know, structure-borne vibration. When a panel is vibrating, it's acting as its own speaker. So that mechanical energy in the outer skin is going to be transferring energy into the air, into acoustic energy. So that's what you're gonna hear. Um, it is not going to block outside noise and it's not going to absorb outside noise. Um, for blocking and absorbing, we have our next step, which is going to be Resinix Guardian. Resinix Guardian is a hydrophobic melamine foam composite that has a layer of floating mass loaded vinyl in the middle of it. Uh, that is going to be handling our sound absorption and noise blocking. Uh, that's just gonna be stuck right on top of wherever we install CLD squares. Uh, from there, we're gonna be doing the inner skin. To be honest, I really don't think we're gonna have to be doing much, if anything at all, on the inner skin on this car. Uh, most modern vehicles are you know, gonna be strong enough on the inner door skin to where they don't need much treatment, if any at all, especially in a situation like this where we're not doing a higher powered sound system, we're just treating for noise reduction purposes. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty structural, they're pretty non-resonant, so we might not have to do anything there. Most of the, you know, treatment is gonna be on the outer skin and the door panel itself, and the decoupling layer between the door panel and inner door skin is gonna be applied to the door panel directly. So inner door skin probably won't need anything, if you're watching this and you're not working on a Porsche 911, uh, the only real thing you have to be concerned about if you don't have resonance is just sealing up the access holes. In this car, I know there are access holes, but they come pretty well sealed from the factory. So like I said, we're probably not gonna have to do anything here. Uh, and then on the door panel itself, we're gonna be doing Resonix CLD squares, again, for resonance control. We're gonna be doing Resinix Butyl Rope to help with small areas that might be touching and buzzing against each other. We're gonna be doing Resinix Fiber Mat for decoupling and sound absorption purposes. And we're also going to be doing small pieces of Resinix CCF3S. This is a very thin and very soft decoupling foam that we're gonna be using on you know very small pieces to just help prevent buzzes and rattles. So let's get into it. All right, now that we have the door panel off, we can see what's going on with the inner door skin. Um, like I said, there is so much structure to this inner door skin that it's gonna have strength of its own naturally. We're not really gonna need to do constrained layer damper since there's not really much resonance. Um, all of these dips and peaks and curves naturally create strength in the steel. Even though the steel is thin, uh, these shapes are what create strength and it's gonna be very non-resonant. We could just tell by knocking on it. You know, it's not ringing like I'm knocking on the quarter panel here. It's strong. So we're not really gonna do anything on this inner door skin. What we're going to do is we're gonna remove this access panel. Uh, speaking of the access panel, this is actually probably the only resonant thing on this door skin. Um, so we're probably gonna apply CLD to the back side of this. Maybe the front, you know, if we wanna keep OEM appearances for the sake of just doing it, um, you know, we can do it just on the back side. But if we wanna take it, you know, a little step further and don't care about, you know, we're doing stuff anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, maybe one layer in the back, maybe a second layer in the front. Um, speaking of layering, doing multiple layers on top of each other of constrained layer damper doesn't really yield any performance benefits. These types of products are not working by adding mass. They are working by the viscoelastic properties of the butyl reacting or actually creating um, shear forces against the panel it's adhered to, as well as the aluminum layer that's on top. So it's those shear forces that create resistance in the panel from flexing. Um, so yeah, don't go wasting your time and money stacking multiple layers. You know, you're gonna see a lot of people online saying, oh yeah, I did three layers of this product that worked out great. Don't, don't bother, don't, it's pointless. And frankly, we have the testing on our website to even show you. So go to our independent testing section to see 
exactly what I'm talking about. But moving on from that, um, yeah, we're just gonna remove this access panel, remove the speaker, and we're gonna get to work on the outer door skin. All right, so we have the access panel out and the factory mid-bass speaker out, and we have access to the outer door skin. Um, I see, you know, there's a lot of area to cover here, a lot of good flat spots. This is gonna be good for the sake of applying constrained layer damper. We're gonna get a lot of good benefit out of this since this is very resonant. Um, there is one strip of constrained layer damper applied from the factory here. Um, I'm gonna see, it kind of runs the whole length of the bottom of the outer door skin. I'm gonna see if I can remove it. Um, if I can easily without, you know, running the risk of deforming the outer door skin, I'm going to. Um, just a heads up to anyone watching this and wants to take something like this off on their outer door skin or on their roof or, you know, trunk lid or anything. Removing sound deadener on a panel that is seen on the outside of a car can get very, not dangerous, but like by the natural sense of the term, but dangerous to the, you know, beauty of your vehicle. You know, getting in here with tools or anything like that, you know, you could be picking at this. Oh, look at that, it kind of peeled right up just by me playing with it. So this might be easier than I thought. But, you know, going at this with tools and stuff, you're gonna be putting pressure points on, these, on this panel and that might be visible from the outside as little tiny dents. So, you know, I have customers that email me or call me all the time, they're like, yeah, I removed, you know, I, I used a putty knife to remove the factory sound deadener on the, on the roof or on the outer door skin. I'm like, oh, please don't do that. <laughs> so yeah, just be careful. It's just a little PSA for everyone. So yeah, like I said, we got a ton of room up here and hopefully down here, regardless, I'm still gonna apply stuff over this, even though I say, you know, two layers is kind of useless, we're still gonna get um, some benefit. There's still plenty of open area in here that's not touched by uh, this factory strip. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> All right, uh, I just managed to peel out this factory strip of constrained layer damper. Uh, it was actually pretty easy. Um, this is my first time doing this, removing this on a 992. I've done it on 991s before. It seems like the exact same thing. It was really easy to remove. It doesn't even seem like it's really applied. It's kind of just, all right, done, like done. Um, and then there was more evidence of that because I don't know if you saw in the time-lapse video, but as I started peeling it, I started, I stopped and I started touching in here. It was, it was actually, there was a little bit of moisture behind uh, this factory piece of CLD. Um, and I was just one, I was a little confused as to what was really going on. You can kind of see, you know, a pattern that looks like it's a, uh, might be caused by moisture. It's not corrosion, but it's definitely something. I, I don't know, but. Whatever. And yeah, so now we're gonna get into doing the CLD. Um, a few tips for those who have never done this before. Use as large of single pieces as possible. Doing a bunch of tiny pieces, even if they equal the same size or same coverage as a larger piece, is not nearly as effective. Remember, that uh, layer of aluminum is providing a reference for the butyl to provide shear forces against. When we cut that reference layer and cut that butyl, the, that reference layer and those shear resistance forces diminish greatly. So as large of pieces as possible, um, and we wanna get as much coverage as possible. If we can't get full coverage, you know, we don't need full coverage, but obviously more is better. There is a point of diminishing returns. A lot of people throw out arbitrary numbers, but frankly, like that is such bullshit. Uh, because every panel is different. Everything's gonna behave differently. There is no way to know where diminishing returns hit. Frankly, I'm putting a lot of labor and time into this. I'd rather just do as much coverage as possible. Um, the, the product itself is not nearly as expensive compared to how I value my time and effort. And I really don't plan on wanting to go in here again. So, or any car that I'm, that I'm doing work on. Uh, so I like to do it once and just do it right and then move on from it. Uh, so yeah. 
we're going to do as much coverage as possible in constrained layer damper. Um, and then we're going to be doing Guardian. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is in between the crash bar and the outer door skin itself, there's usually a little gap. Uh, it's outer door skins usually adhered to that crash bar with like a foam adhesive. It's usually very soft, but you know, it depends on the car, but there's still usually a gap in between crash bar and outer door skin. Utilizing Resinix butyl rope to stuff in between that gap helps utilize the crash bar as a brace for the outer door skin. So think of it as breaking up the outer door skin into smaller pieces. The larger and flatter a panel is, the more resonant it's gonna be. If we, if we have a panel that's you know this big and we have this crash bar and we essentially you know provide butyl rope support, we're essentially splitting it into two panels that's this big. So just a little tip, it's really quick, really easy, you know, really inexpensive and pretty effective. So yeah, don't forget to do that as well. All right, just finished up the application of the Resinix CLD squares on the outer door skin. Ended up using about three and a half to four square feet for the outer skin. Also did the Resinix butyl rope installation between the crash bar and outer door skin for further stabilization. Uh, one thing to note that I did not touch on before is utilizing a roller to install this constrained layer damper. Uh, the point of it is to help make sure you have full contact um, on the piece you're applying it to. Um, also, just a heads up about rollers, make sure you're using one with a flat surface. Um, you know, not one of the ones that have knurled surfaces or, you know, patterns in them. Uh, when you use a knurled roller or a patterned roller, you are stretching and deforming the aluminum constraining layer on your constrained layer damper. That is going to weaken the layer and that's going to reduce the performance. Uh, again, we do have testing results for this on our independent testing section on the website. The difference is actually pretty drastic. It's, it's more than you would think. Um, just a quick little, you know, breakdown of it. Uh, a heavy knurled roller uh, was half, you know, made it, it made a product half as effective as it was previously. So that's, um, that's, pretty, that's pretty intense. That's a, a pretty large difference. Um, so yeah, stay away from those. So yeah, let me just show you really quick, um, just by tapping on it, you know, this isn't a super scientific test, but you know. Now going over to the driver's side, which I did not do yet. Back over to passenger side. Yeah, pretty large difference. So now we're gonna get into the Resinix Guardian installation. All right, onto the Resinix Guardian installation. One thing to note out of the gate is that melamine foam is inherently not very strong. Uh, thankfully, the construction of our Resinix Guardian, you know, with the mass loaded vinyl layer as well as the polyester acoustic facing, help keep it together and you know be reliable and durable uh, more than enough for an automotive application. Um, but it's more so the adhesive in this case that I'm worried about. The adhesive on it is very strong, <laughs> um, so you have to really be careful what you're doing because as soon as that adhesive touches something and you try to pull it off, it's, it's going to cause some problems. Um, so what I like to do is I like to take the wax paper, the extra wax paper from our Resinix CLD squares box and use that to make patterns and cut out predetermined shapes of the Resinix Guardian. Install those shapes into the door itself, peel the paper, the backing paper, inside of the door and stick it on that way. Um, at, or, you know, the easy to reach places you can peel outside of the, outside of the car, but, you know, for these tougher areas like down here, I would suggest installing it 
first, like putting it in the location and then peeling the backing paper. It's gonna be tough to peel the backing paper, but it's gonna yield a much better end result, I promise you. So yeah, um, like I said, what I do is I take the wax paper in and I just draw out the shapes. I leave plenty of room, you know, so I can still get to the backing paper. Um, I'm not making it as absolute tight as possible. I'll probably leave like half an inch, um, you know, from the boundaries of the vehicle and crash bar itself. But um, yeah, so let's just get into it. All right, getting into cutting the Resinex Guardian. Um, I do have a separate video on this, but I might as well just go over it here. Uh, first thing you want is a box cutter, standard box cutter, preferably one that is as thin as possible. Um, reason being, you know, as you're cutting through the foam, you don't want it to, you know, split it up as much. Um, you know, so a thicker one can possibly do damage to the melamine, but, you know, I have this standard Husky box cutter that works great. And you're also gonna want fresh razors to go with it. Remember guys, you used, or used, you spent a good amount of money on this Resinex Guardian product. Don't be lazy, go to the hardware store, get a pack of razors, get the proper box cutter, do this right, because, you know, using the wrong product or just using a dull razor, um, you, you run the risk of damaging it, you know? It's all still usable if it doesn't cut pretty, but, the end of the day you just you want to do this right um, you know so it's pretty straightforward um, you're gonna take the piece of Guardian take your templates you know draw it out and then just cut it you're not gonna try to cut it through in one motion I like to do it in three or four separate motions one cutting through the uh, top portion of the melamine the second one going through the mass loaded vinyl and the third going through the rest of the product cleanly through um, and yeah that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I like to put down a piece of cardboard or a piece of like scrap wood, like MDF or something underneath it. So I'm not cutting into my table and I have a nice smooth surface that's sacrificial that I can cut into and make sure I get a clean cut straight through it. Um, if you find your razor starting to grip the melamine or start tearing it, it's time to change the razor. It's not sharp enough. All right, so I have my Resinex Guardian all cut up into shape and ready to go. Uh, before I go installing them, I'm just gonna do a test fitment to see if there's any trimming that needs to be done. Um, and yeah, like I said, make sure you install them into the door and test everything before you do this because that adhesive, it's really strong and once it's stuck, it's not coming off. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see how we did on cutting everything out and get it installed. All right, so we have the Resinex Guardian test fit in here. It's definitely tight, um, but I think I did a pretty good job of mapping out the templates without having to make any modifications. But uh, it's, it's definitely gonna be a little tricky to get this installed. You don't have to do as much coverage as I'm doing here, but when it comes to a sound absorber and a noise barrier, especially with noise barriers, uh, Actually, let me backtrack a little bit. Noise barriers to work really effectively truly need 100% coverage. Um, that's almost never gonna happen unless you're going crazy in an installation. But with a sound absorber, uh, more is better. The more absorbing material you have, the more sound you are going to absorb. Um, so I'm, like I said before, I just try to do this once and do it right so I don't have to think about it later. So you, I could make it easier on myself by making these pieces smaller, but it's not gonna be as effective. So 
yeah, I'm gonna get into uh, just peeling off the backing paper and getting it installed. It's definitely gonna be a little tricky, but I think it'll be worth it. So something I can show you, you know, you can remove it so you can uh, just get the one little corner peeled. Um, this is gonna help, you know, peel the rest of the paper. It's gonna be a little difficult to really get it. And the trick to peeling this backing paper off the Guardian is just fold over a little corner and just kind of pick the adhesive off of it with your nail and you'll kind of have it free. If you just kind of get crazy with it and just try to peel it, you're, you're probably gonna screw it up. Like I said, the melamine is not, it's not the strongest material, but it is the best material for this job that we have here. Um, so that's why we use it in Resinix Guardian. But uh, yeah, just peel the little corner and then put it in the door and then you'll be able to grab the corner and peel it off from there. Just be careful, you don't wanna rip any of the edges or anything like that, but peeling this corner, pro tip, use it, it works. Actually, uh, another tip, you can peel the paper almost all the way off and then just gently let it go back on. Don't really stick it down. That way it'll be really easy to peel off once, it in the, once it's in there, but it still protects the adhesive from touching anything, so yeah. All right, we just finished up the Resinix Guardian install on the passenger side door. Uh, went pretty smooth. I only had to trim one piece, um, and that was, if I recall, it was the top left piece. Uh, it was the hardest one to reach out of this whole install, so kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, rest of it was really straightforward. You know, just making sure you peel most of that backing paper outside of the door, putting it on lightly. You know, that made things super smooth and easy. And yeah, once they're kind of on there, make sure you, you know, put some good pressure on there, make sure they're stuck on pretty good. And yeah, so let's uh, take a look. So, you know, we have pretty good coverage in here. I know it's tough to see, but you know, we have pretty much as much coverage as you're really gonna get in this door without going ballistic. So yeah, uh, that, that covers it for the outer skin of this car on this side and um, yeah, I guess we're gonna move on now to just applying some CLD to the access panel and then doing the door panel itself. So let's get going.